Hey, we're live. I hope, hope this is working. It's been a little bit slow, our, our internet connection today, so keep your fingers crossed. Um, I don't know whether, if you're able to write in the chat box, it would be great to see if you're there. I can see there's a few people who've joined, so thank you very much and your patience as well, because I've been away for a couple of weeks, but I was keen to give myself a proper break. Um, oh, brilliant. Eric, yes, all is well now that I can see your name. Hello, Stephen. Fantastic. No problem. Oh, that's great news that your mum's getting a booster. I hope that goes well. That's really good. Hello, Penny. Excellent. Good to see you. And Adrian, thank you for joining the, the loyal group. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming back again. Um, I was keen to give myself a break. I really hadn't had all the annual leave I should have been taking. So I was keen to make sure I took some time offline and resisting going on on social media and all the things that we can easily end up doing. I think it's really healthy to give yourselves times when you don't do that. It, it can become a an addiction for us all, really. And if it can be healthy, I think it's always healthy to have a break from things. So uh, especially in these times, it's a little bit harder to have the same breaks, isn't it? So I hope you've had a good couple of weeks. I hope you've managed to have a break yourselves and enjoying this lovely time of year and the sunshine and the flowers coming out. It's most definitely spring, isn't it? You can actually feel it's almost coming up to summer. Maybe it's not too far off. We're certainly very close to May now. So this week I'm bringing along a bit of a treat. It's very simple and very lovely. And it's from a book that... Um, I ordered, which I really love, um, on the god grandfather, I was about to say godfather, grandfather of modern origami, Akira Yoshizawa, who in his own estimations suggested that he created 50,000 <laughs> models. How astonishing is that? Wow, just incredible. And his pieces are absolutely amazing, full of so much expression. What, what a master of the medium. And to think that he kind of almost started what what has, uh, you know, become so big. And of course, traditional origami is always there, but he took it to another level of of the art form that it really is. So uh, I was keen to read and look a little bit more at Akira Yoshizawa's work. Um, and I just thought I'd share just a very simple one. And this puppy I thought was rather lovely. I'll show you this. So it's, it's kind of his simplicity, but it's got a sculptural element to it and it's very playful, simple, but it's sweet. And you can really feel that it's got a life to it as well. Oh, oh wow, Eric, that's amazing. So your partner loved it. Wow, you made her a bouquet of irises. That's so lovely to hear. Oh, how lovely. It's a really lovely, lovely piece, isn't it, the iris? It looks so real and it's something quite different, I think, from the usual square. So, yeah, really well done to Peter. And I know the last couple of weeks I've been away, I'd recorded a film each time. Um, one was of a sweet little chick and a bunny, which are both uh, Peter's own designs. So I hope you're able to do those. I know it was pre-recorded, but I was keen. Hello, Pebra. I was keen to have a break over that time. So if you haven't already done that, I do recommend because they're actually new designs. Um, but I'm just going slowly back into only just catching up with things been away which was really lovely yeah and some family uh, illness as well so thankfully it was an emergency thankfully um hospital is very very good so very confident that things are good again but yeah lots has been happening and I'm glad to be back to some kind of normal and gentle time so excellent lovely to have you all so yes we're going to be making a little puppy um if you have um paper that's colored on one side and the other maybe brown's a good color don't know what, what color dog you might like puppy um or just any paper would do i might actually quickly do a little bit of coloring on one side that's it just in white it's very sweet very simple uh, and you'll find yourself being very playful with it. So I have got just a scrap of paper and I'm just going to start putting a little bit of colouring in, actually. I do enjoy a little bit of scribbling. I find that releases a bit of tension in itself, actually. Brown pencil. So I'm just going to, just for a moment while chatting, do a little bit of colouring. And before I went away, it was also the British Origami Society Convention. That was wonderful to be a part of. 
and I was encouraging myself to do a few more animals. I've been recently trying to do some animals, which this is part of. I've been a little less doing that, I think, in some ways, because they're a little bit trickier. Um, and it's also, I find often the sort of flowers and the modular quite relaxing. And so I think I've been sharing what I, what I love doing, but it's nice to increase your repertoire of things to do. And obviously animals have so much meaning to us all. They're a little bit more individual as well in some ways. Um, but they can often be a little bit more too technical. And so I think that's also another reason I've been doing less of that because I'm keen it's accessible to people who maybe have never done origami before. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, wow. Starch velvet. What a lovely thought. Oh, that'd be so nice. Yeah, really soft velvet for a puppet. For a little puppy. Oh, what a gorgeous idea. Eric, you paint such beautiful pictures with your words. Just a few words and you've conveyed so much. Oh, money, Laura, it's been, it has been a couple of weeks. So there's been two weeks I haven't been here. So I guess in a way, this is three weeks since last time, which feels like a very long time, doesn't it? Yeah, I hope hope you've been keeping well, Laura. Um, so we're going to be making a little puppy. So I have got it's just some scrap paper. Um, I've coloured in one side. You do not have to colour it in. Or maybe you've got some origami paper, but I thought I might as well do it that way. You can also then see which side's which. I am going to be following this lovely book of Akira Yoshizawa um, and lovely diagrams in here. And so I'm going to be following that. I guess it's sort of at the simpler end of things, which, which I think is good. This is a good way to get back into things, isn't it? Or to me, origami, I'm really interested in how it makes you feel. And that's to gently, gently encourage yourself um, it's for me less about the technical side of we're always learning about wonderful materials of, of paper and how things work so but just slowly slowly gently gently because I want this to be a lovely enjoyable experience so let's let's get going definitely I've been chatting a lot here so I've gone on to the white side of my paper and the brown side turning over I'm going to take a corner and I'm purely just making a square so I took one side and lined it up the other. I'm just using a scrap of paper. For some reason, I don't feel like making a massive dog. This is just a scrap, and it'll be quite good size, actually. I need to remove that little strip. So if you have your scrap of paper, took the corner, lined it up there, and we're going to remove the rectangle. So I'm going to turn it over, and I'm going to take this back, line it up, squash it down. Good strong fold. And then again, a little tiny rip. I can get rid of that. Get rid of that little bit. Probably something wonderful I could do with that as well. So what I want you to do is to have your little piece of paper. So it's standing up now. Oh, excellent. Oh, brilliant. Yes. Oh. That's lovely, saying, Laura, that you've, yeah, the, the meta ring. Actually, it's funny because I was thinking I should do another meta ring because I bought one of her beautiful books. I've been in touch with the, the very the very real meta herself, and um, she said I'd be very welcome to demonstrate any from her books. So I demonstrated the most, uh, the most widely known of her models, uh, meta ring, and I thought actually it'd be time to do another one of those. They're so good. And also... Um, because like May, this kind of the idea of rings and garlands feels rather nice. So I think, yeah, I think I should maybe go back to that. I should figure out which should, which would be a nice one to do. She has a very distinctive way of making little pockets, which is very neat. So if you've got your little piece of paper like this, are you happy? So keeping it closed there, diagonal size, these are the open bits. So we're going to do a fold from just down there up here. Now I'm going to deliberately leave a little bit there because that's going to be its foot. So I am taking this. As I said, the animal ones are a little bit different in a way. They're a bit more, a bit more sculptural. Right, I'm going to start playing around with this myself to work out what's the best kind of angle. I guess something a little bit like that. So can you see I'm leaving a little, a little edge there, which will be its foot. 
and I guess something of an angle like that. It could be maybe even more uh, horizontal to the bottom of it if you wish. It's up to you, really. Play around. It, this is far more kind of elastic in a way, I think, doing animals and other things. But I am leaving a little bit there. Maybe it could be wider. I don't know. Right. Something like that. It's a little bit like making a fox as well. There's a lovely fox. That, a bit like this. So it was purely that fold and a half piece of paper. I took the top bit and I folded it with a little gap there across there. Great. So next step, there's not many steps to this. It's, it's really neat. Is to pop your finger in that pocket. And can you see? I've just, that's where the pocket is. And I'm going to squash it down to make a face. So we've made that line there, that little leg there. And so we just open that pocket and squash it down to make a little face in the middle. There we go. Okay, you're probably playing around to make sure you can get rid of get rid of any wrinkles. There we go, you can feel its face could turn from one side to another. Play around that. So something like that. I've got a little top now. What's going on? Hang around with the paper. That's it. A little face. Lovely. There we go. Happy? So it could, could be a fox already, couldn't it? But it's not. It's going to do something else. Right? Sorry, I keep on looking at diagram. <laughs> Uh, it's been nice not to not to memorise something and to actually look at a book, which is rare for me, to be honest. Uh, we're next going to do the tail. So we're going to do a little, little fold there. Oh, hello, Melvin. Welcome. This is quite a simple one. You may be able to catch up quite quickly, Melvin, because I know you're so experienced. I'm just going to really briefly show for Melvin. Melvin, we just took a piece of paper, folded it in half diagonally, and then had that diagonal line over here, and I gave a little fold. So there's a little bit of a foot up here, pushing it over. So you get that sort of a shape. So there's a leg and this will become a head. And then if you pop your finger in, squash it down, you've got a face. So hopefully you can catch up quite easily there. So we're going to make a tail next. So we're going to take a little angle, something like that, and pull it up. So with a lot of the animal folds, you can, you're sort of mapping it out with a fold and then you unpick it and then fold it in on it. So that's the technical side, it feels like. So taking that little fold there. And then what I want you to do is to sort of open it up and turn it inside itself. I'm sure there's, there's more elegant ways of expressing it in a more technical language, but I deliberately don't a bit really. Can you see? So it was like this. I did a fold there to make the line. I unfolded it and I opened up this whole area. And then I took this and I sort of pushed it in and it will pop up inside itself. So you're following the lines that you've made. And there you go. That's a kind of a little, little tail. And you don't need to squash it down. It, it's far more sculpture. It uses things a lot more sort of 3D. And that's what it looks like anyway. Please do correct me if I'm wrong on any of these points. Right. So we've got a little tail, got a little face. We could maybe give it a little nose, a little puppy. So maybe taking that little point and just folding it upwards. Make a little nose. That helps, doesn't it? Great. Obviously, you could, add, you could draw on this as well if you wished. Um, and I rather like how it's shows in the book you could actually have your your little face could be your dog could be wriggling around as well already it could be turning around this is all about being playful but you've got a little face there so our next step is we're going to make some ears so the side really from what i can see just taking the side and folding it in like that and the same with the other side too so taking that folding in a bit there we go i mean you could sort of open it up again if you wanted a little bit those ears 
your doggy will be unique to mine and I think that's that's the lovely side of these animal folds that you're just playing with it so it'll have its own little character for you lovely you can see it's all very subtle um what else could we do next right we could also give it a bit more of a body so we're gonna go we're gonna add a little fold about from there to there so I am just adding a fold from there to there. And it's because we're going to plump out his body a little bit. So all I did was I did sort of roughly halfway from about that corner. Obviously, I'm keeping the head and the, the legs a little bit clear. A little bit of a squeeze there. Opening it up. Is that good? And then what I want you to do is you can then... To plump it out a bit along that line, can you see? Just putting your fingers in, so just get a bit more 3D, really. So that's giving it a bit more, and I'm doing that maybe on both sides. So maybe on the other side, you're reversing the direction there. But yes, it is. I agree. There is a fox. I don't know. Don't know whether this came before the fox or the fox came after. But I mean, I think you'd find both of these really in a way by playing too so things that always end up being a bit related to each other because that there is a that's how things start suggesting yeah it does feel quite similar to the fox I agree but this is a puppy a little bit different so maybe a little face there uh maybe also you could maybe just get the front of the front of the puppy as well a little bit more shapely so I'm just going to fold back along a little bit Folding back along that line where the legs are, folding them back. Um, that's pretty much it, actually. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? So it's simple. It's quite evocative, and it, it's almost it's those it's that sort of poetic side. I think that Josh is our head. That's sort of suggestive, minimalist, sculptural, very beautiful. Uh, so almost, you know, it's not super realistic, but it's about using your imagination, isn't it? But I hope, I hope you've been able to make that. And it is rather cute. I do recommend making like a little one. And you could obviously draw a little dog's face on there or some paws or some fur. But sometimes keeping it simple is exactly what origami is, is wonderful for. So that's it. That was a simple one today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, you're very welcome, Eric, and delighted to hear that the irises have been passed on, passing on your love and care for your origami is what it's all about. Uh, yeah, it is easy, isn't it? But that's lovely. But what a lovely discovery, um, the playfulness of paper. And you can really play around. I think, like, you can get this little doggy to twist around as well. Oh, you can get it to twist around. It's got a little itch there. There's all sorts of things you can do with this. Excellent. No problem. Well, good luck, Stephen, for your for your mother's um, booster as well. I'm really glad that she's being offered that. I think obviously immunity is waning, so so the better. Oh, lovely. Well, look after yourselves, everyone. I will be back next week uh, with a traditional fold, which is really wonderful. Uh, one I'd made many years ago and was delighted to get back into. It's almost quite surprising. It's quite exciting. It's a little bit tricky. Um, I think you'll really like it. And then I'll, I should maybe think about a me another meta ring or something. We'll see what happens. It is sweet. <laughs> uh, enjoy the sweetness and uh, wishing you all a good week. Take care, keep well and look after yourselves. Bye bye. Thank you.